what, I mean, did you always dream of being a writer? Um, I, what was your first story sale, and how long did you have to submit stories and get rejections before you broke through? Uh, yeah, I wanted to be a writer. I, uh, that was, for me, you know, that was the thing that I really cared about because I really liked to do it. From an early age, I was getting something, I was getting something back. Uh, you always know, like, when a, a kid finds his sweet spot because you don't have to tell him to practice. It isn't practice, you know, you're getting something out of it. So I started to write stories and submit them uh, around the age of probably 12, my first submissions. And, you know, I submitted them to Forrest J. Ackerman. Oh, boy. <laughs> who had uh, famous monsters of film land, and he had other magazines. There was a magazine called Spacemen, I think. And uh, I got to see uh, Forey before he died, and he had saved some of those early submissions. So, and they were written on a you know old royal typewriter that I had. So, I started to send stories out, and uh, and I pounded a nail into the wall of my bedroom. And when I got the rejection slips back, I would put them on that nail. And by the time that I was 16 or 17 years old. Uh, the nail tore free from the plaster, so I just got a bigger nail. And, <laughs> and then when I was 19, I sold a story to Startling Mystery Stories. It was called The Glass Floor, and they paid me, like, I think, 35 bucks. That huh? was my first sale. It was a lot of money back then. It was a lot of money. It, <laughs> it meant a lot. But the thing is, like, uh, can, I, can I tell another story? Sure. Um, I, I sold... Two stories to those Robert Lounders magazines, Starling St Mystery Stories. Right. I remember them. There was another one, uh, Tales of Horror and Suspense or something. They were small checks. So when I was a senior in high school, uh, in college rather, I wrote for the uh, campus newspaper. And one of the big attractions was they had all these typewriters. And my typewriter in, in uh, the place, the apartment where I lived, basically sucked a bird. So they had the, these typewriters, and just before I graduated, I had an idea. I'd worked the summer before in a woolen mill, and when Fourth of July week came along, the uh, foreman said, we're going to shut down the mill for a week. Now, you have your choice. Either you can take the week off without pay, or you can join this cream cleaning crew. We're going to go down and we're going to clean the basement and the sub-basement where nobody's bothered to clean anything out for years. So I took the week off and when I came back, this guy I worked with in the, in the dye house said, oh man, Steve, you should have been there. It was, it was far out. They gave us hoses and we went down there and there were rats everywhere, man. They were jumping out. They were as big as cats and we washed them down the gullies and, you know, into the Androscoggin River. So I was thinking about this. And I said, I'm going to write a story, but in my story, there's going to be even bigger rats, and they will have mutated down there in the dark. They're going to be as big as cats. They're going to be as big as dogs. And so that story was called Graveyard Shift, because that's when they were doing it. And, and so I was working on this story, and one of my friends came in. Um, Mac came in, and he said, what are you doing, Steve? And I said, well, I'm writing a story about giant rats under a mill, and this cleaning crew is kind of besieged by these rats and driven backward. He said, man, that's great. He said, what you got to do is like, one of these guys goes crazy, and he's running around, and he's ripping rats' heads off, you know, and flinging the bodies beside and everything. And, and I thought to myself, it's good, but it's not literary, okay? <laughs> It doesn't have that sort of, like, feeling, that kind of, like, John Cheever, John Updike kind of feeling. Of, so what I did instead of that was, because he was on the right track. He just didn't, he wasn't shooting high enough. So in my story, uh, one of the guys uh, is bitten by rats all over his legs, and he screams, and while his mouth is open to scream, a rat climbs into his mouth, and... I just wanted to try and, you know, do it as elegantly as possible. So, <laughs> so you can feel the rat's fur on the roof of his mouth 
and the legs scrabbling at his chin and his throat as the rat grabs hold of the guy's tongue and rips it out of his mouth. And I sold that story for 200 bucks. <laughs> okay? Which is more than 35. Pardon me? It's more than 35. It was more than 35. You were moving up in the world. That was to Cavalier Magazine, and uh, I sold a bunch of others to those. I got married the next year, and, and uh, we had a little girl, Naomi, and when she got the ear infections, my, my wife would say, hurry up, think of a monster. 